This is Edna Krabappel. She was a fourth grade teacher at Springfield Elementary, teaching one Bartholomew J. Simpson. These two had a lot of run-ins. A lot of run-ins. But sometimes they managed to get along. Edna was very cynical about both her job and her personal life. She dated many men in Springfield over the course of the series, including Principal Skinner, Comic Book Guy, Sideshow Bob, and Moe. Principal Skinner took the breakup the hardest. She eventually went on to marry Ned Flanders. They had a happy and loving marriage until her death in season 25. This is the history of Edna Krabappel. This is a somewhat special episode of Simpsons Histories, as today we're covering a character who had been retired. But Mrs. Krabappel is also a special character in that she has one of the more pronounced arcs over the course of the series. This isn't really a show that does continuity, they're very much obsessed with status quo endings. Doing a timeline video about this show would be somewhat ridiculous. But Edna was one of the few characters whose situation the writers allowed to change over time. So today we're going to take a look at the various eras of Edna Krabappel and celebrate what made her such a standout character in the series. Instead of going through everything strictly chronologically, we're going to split it into two major parts. First looking at her professional work as Bart's teacher, and then looking at how her personal life evolved. As Bart's teacher, the majority of her appearances can be thrown into one of three buckets. Handing out tests, having the kids do presentations, and taking them on wacky field trips. Her first two roles in Season 1 are literally handing out an aptitude test in Bart the Genius and taking them out on a field trip to the power plant in Homer's Odyssey. This is going to get really repetitive if we spend time describing every single one, so here is a quick rundown. This is a long list, you have been warned. Tests! We have aptitude tests, test to pass the 4th grade, career test, test where Bart cries wolf, test where Bart is actually sick, standardized test, and in a trios of horror, a magic test. For the presentations, we have Bart's book report on Treasure Island, show and tell about how kittens are born, the person I most admire, baby's first pop-up book, Bart showing a neural disruptor, Bart brings his dog to school, the grandparents come to school, Bart shows off a giant snake, and Bart's presentation on cavemen. The field trips are probably the most fun and memorable of the bunch. They went to the nuclear power plant, the chocolate factory, the box factory, the Fort Springfield Civil War reenactment, the police station, the TV history museum, and finally, the Springfield Glacier. Whew, that is a lot. You notice that a lot of these appearances don't necessarily revolve around Mrs. Krabappel herself. A lot of her function on the show had always been to be the setup person for Bart, or to be the straight man in this comedy routine. Sometimes she literally hands the plot off to Principal Skinner. Bart is the kind of character who needs someone to rebel against, needs someone to bring out his mischievous nature. Mrs. Krabappel immediately became an important character foil for Bart in the series. Without Mrs. Krabappel, there is no underachiever and proud of it. She's kind of like Bart's version of Patty and Selma in some ways. She's probably the only person in Springfield who can keep him in check. The writers get a lot of mileage out of just having Mrs. Krabappel and Bart torture each other. She'll taunt him about the D's on his report cards. She'll punish him by calling on him first every single time. In Lisa on Ice, when Bart actually is trying to answer every question, she tells him to knock it off. All of her major appearances in Trials of Horror episodes play off of this dynamic. In Trials of Horror 2, Bart has the upper hand and she has to go along with everything he says. In Trials of Horror 5, she's beyond excited about the prospect of eating all the children. Way later, in season 21, they do an Alfred Hitchcock parody about their feud. Bart wants to trade murders with Lisa and pressures her to kill Mrs. Krabappel. But in the end, when Lisa accidentally kills Bart, Edna is more than pleased. If you haven't seen this segment, you should really check it out. It's really well done. We honestly don't see a lot of Krabappel and Lisa together, just moments in the momentarianism and the class president episodes. It's a cool dynamic. The modern seasons really like to escalate the feud between these two. You have an episode like Bart Gets a Z, where Bart gets her fired after spiking her drink with alcohol. He tries to atone for this misdeed, helps her open a muffin shop, and he eventually confesses. She gets so angry upon finding out, she literally tells him that he is bad on the inside. Ouch. Then in season 22, she actually hits Bart, which causes her to be suspended. It's actually kind of shocking seeing her hit him, even if it wasn't particularly hard. 
It felt like a culmination of 22 seasons of Edna's frustration with him. Not justifying her actions or anything, just saying the story idea made sense for a later season. Once again, Bart feels bad about getting her suspended and helps her out. This is what ultimately leads to the whole Nedna thing. The thing is, and maybe this is a controversial stance, but I've always felt like Mrs. Krabappel really did care about Bart's educational development. You think of her as a very cynical character, someone who doesn't care if they have yo-yo presentations, but by and large, Mrs. Krabappel always at least tried to give him a good education. If she didn't care, she wouldn't have arranged a sit-down with Homer and Marge about him failing. She wouldn't have given them specific parenting tips during a parent-teacher conference. The entire plot of the PTA disbands revolves around Mrs. Krabappel not thinking they have enough resources to teach properly. In season 14, she literally stays after school and painstakingly helps Bart finish his World War I report. If that's not dedication to your work, then I don't know what is. The writers definitely swung back and forth in terms of how much effort she puts into her job, let's be real. However, I've always interpreted her apathetic moments as being less about her internal core values and more of the result of external stress. The stress of dealing with Bart, a lack of resources, and the problems in her personal life. When it comes to Krabappel's romantic relationships, the writers worked on this angle very early on in the series. This is really the other side of the coin when it comes to her character. They could have just written her like Ms. Hoover, just the very unhappy teacher character who does plot important stuff for Bart. But with Mrs. Krabappel, they put in the extra effort of adding depth. She isn't just bitter about her job, this is a woman who is deeply lonely and cynical about finding love. As early as season 2, they had her describing how her ex-husband moved into a love nest. In season 3, she describes him chasing something small and fluffy down a rabbit hole, and later clarifies that he ran off with their marriage counselor. He even puts sugar in her gas tank. He was originally going to be at the marriage retreat in season 2's War of the Simpsons, but they were ultimately cut. According to the writers, his name is Ken. Neat. Now we don't have to do a video about him. Season 3's Bart the Lover is our first spotlight episode from Mrs. Krabappel, the first time we see her life outside of the classroom. She was always portrayed as a very sex-positive character, somewhat unusually for the show. There's an adult side to her character that we don't really get with other secondary characters. She's a little like Krusty the Clown in this respect, who is ironically another Bart-centric character. Bart the Lover established a sort of pattern with Bart, in that he ends up being inexorably linked to almost every one of Krabappel's long-term relationships. From seasons 3 through 7, we see Edna trying to hook up with a lot of men and a lot of commentary about her past experiences. During the sex education video, she's literally smoking in the back of the classroom remarking, she's faking it, then telling the students that none of them will fall in love and will marry out of fear of dying alone. In season 5, she describes herself as a smart woman who makes bad choices in love. In season 8, she goes on a date with Sideshow Bob. Bart ruins his one and only chance with her. Then, in Grade School Confidential, we get her first major character shift, when she starts dating Principal Skinner. This is a ridiculously sweet episode, probably one of the sweetest they have ever done. I think what really worked about these two as a couple is that they balance each other's world weariness. Skinner has a real innocence and straightforwardness to him. You get the impression that Edna dated a lot of phonies, a lot of men that tried to use her. And I'm not just talking about huts. Principal Skinner doesn't really play games. What you see is what you get with him. You might have noticed that when I did the test and presentation rundown earlier, that there weren't as many examples from the middle to late seasons. That's because, after she got together with Skinner, a lot more of her stuff revolved around that relationship. The classroom stuff became noticeably more scarce. Their early dating years were portrayed largely positively. During the Armin Tamzerian thing, she urges him to stay with her. She goes with him to a science fiction convention. She asks Ned Flanders if he's ever licked maple syrup off of a lover's stomach. She goes with him to the drive-in. But alas, there was trouble in paradise. The writers would constantly show them having serious disagreements about their relationship. In season 10's Mom and Pop Art, Edna tells him that she wants a baby. 
to which Skinner is extremely hesitant. This kind of feels like the beginning of an arc that they didn't actually run with. Instead, they do stuff like Edna dating Flanders briefly in a transparent attempt to make Skinner jealous. She hits on Dredderick Tatum when he's in their class. In season 14, Special Edna, the major conflict is over Skinner making more time for his mother instead of her. This is a pretty significant turning point in their relationship. The episode makes it clear that this is a serious problem. Edna is always number two in Skinner's priorities. And what woman would really put up with that? Once again, Bark gets in the middle of this whole drama. Skinner eventually professes that Edna is the most important person in the world to him, and the two of them get engaged. Then we move on to jokes about them planning their wedding. Stuff like the Jellyfish Festival, where Skinner won't get a band for their reception. And then later, how he doesn't understand how a wedding registry works. Edna still seems to like being in this relationship, she's just getting tired of his naivete and cheapness. Then in season 15, everything comes crashing down in the episode My Big Fat Geek Wedding. I honestly feel a little mixed about how all this went down. They managed to stay true to Skinner's character progression and that it's not his mother who gets in the way. It's just that Skinner gets cold feet and makes it clear that he's not ready to get married. Edna recognizes this and declares that she doesn't want to be with him if he doesn't truly want to be with her. It's a significant shift in Edna's motivations. In the early seasons, she's all about desperately trying to latch on to whoever she can find. I really like that they portray her as being earnest about her relationships, that it's the connection she's really looking for. She rebounds the comic book guy, but in the end decides to marry neither of them. I like the statement that she doesn't necessarily have to be married to anyone. It's an unexpected turn for her character. It just becomes a question of what happens to this arc, since they worked so hard on this angle for so many seasons. Post breakup, we get a lot of jokes demonstrating how much Mrs. Krabappel is so completely over him. They make it clear that, even if Skinner is regretting his decision, that she is moving on with her life. I've never thought about it before, but it's gotta be super uncomfortable for her working in the same school as her ex-fiance. In seasons 16 and 17, we do get a couple of jokes about these two hooking up. Once with Edna proclaiming, this means nothing, and once telling him happy birthday afterwards. Principal Skinner was a virgin in season 8, but it is somewhat unlikely he remains so. I don't want to speculate on this further. It's worth mentioning season 17's The Seemingly Never Ending Story, where we learn more about Edna Krabappel's origin. She moved to Springfield to start her teaching career, and got into a fairly serious relationship with Mo of all people. She was actually going to run away with him. It was that serious. She stopped by the school before leaving and met Bart for the first time. Bart, as part of a con, was painting himself as a troubled student who just wants a teacher who will help him out. Edna, feeling sorry for Bart, breaks it off with Mo and says that she is needed at Springfield Elementary. Poor Mo. Bart sabotaged him without even realizing it. This is a pretty nice piece of continuity, by the way, as they were pretty consistent in implying that Edna had moved to Springfield. She tells Samantha Stanky that she'll get used to the smell in a few weeks, and she mentions she never heard the word embiggen before moving to Springfield. She does appear in the flashback in that episode Springfield Up in high school, however, so it could be that she moved away and then moved back. Or the writer's done goofed. Who knows? Next, we finally gotta talk about Nedna. This is the final chapter of the Edna Krabappel story, the final status quo change for her character. In season 22, she starts dating Ned Flanders. The relationship initially goes well, but Flanders becomes uncomfortable about how many men Edna had been with. They even bring back Joey Kramer from Aerosmith for this episode. I really like the ending of this one, in that Edna stands up for herself, doesn't apologize for her past. She shouldn't have to apologize for dating around. That's ridiculous. And it has to be said, it's not like Flanders is completely pure in this regard either. The episode ended in a cliffhanger for Nedna, letting fans vote for whether this couple should stay together. Okay, so here's the thing. I really liked Krabappel and Skinner together. I was extremely bummed out when the two of them broke up. I don't think that season 15 episode is particularly good. 
It felt like the show doing their dumb status quo thing, not letting anyone ever change or do anything new. Then putting Ned and Edna together it just felt like pairing up random people, just drawing names out of a hat. It all felt very sudden, very out of nowhere. The thing is, Edna and Skinner really did have problems. The show was very upfront about it. Skinner is kind of a dope when it comes to being in a relationship. He's still basically a child. Whereas Flanders also has a lot of the qualities that Edna might want in a relationship. He's ridiculously kind, doesn't play games, and just wants to be in a loving relationship. He's also frickin' ripped. In addition, he is a huge pushover, so it would make sense that he would be attracted to someone as assertive as Edna. This might sound kind of weird, but after 20-something seasons, I kind of just want to see Edna be happy. I don't really care if it came out of nowhere. I don't care if they spent eight seasons shipping her and Skinner. Maybe this is me just wanting the show to try a new dynamic finally. But if these two characters love each other and the relationship makes sense, then they should just do it. I'm actually really curious what everyone else thinks about this relationship shift for Edna. I imagine there might be people still out there carrying the torch for Skinner. The other thing is that Nedna really did create a new dynamic for the show. We see that her being the next door neighbor to Bart creates some conflict. We see her help Ned finally stand up to his neighbor, getting all of his borrowed stuff back. In their follow-up episode in season 23, the two secretly get married. It becomes a story about Edna as a stepmother to Rod and Todd. It's honestly a very compelling dynamic. This is another modern episode I would recommend revisiting. Edna comes from the public school system. Her ideas of raising kids are going to be dramatically different than Ned's. Rod and Todd are extremely sheltered children. It was a good opportunity to bring out some of Edna's best qualities while bringing something new to the Flanders. Afterwards, they would have the occasional peek in at their happy marriage. Stuff like Edna enjoying Ned's compliments. When Ned gives Homer a black eye, Edna comforts him about his guilt and tells him not to worry. She even helps get rid of Lisa's new bully of a teacher. The writers created a sort of Homer, Bart, Edna, Ned relationship square. And this new setup was really starting to bear fruit. Unfortunately, this was not meant to be. Marsha Wallace, the voice actor for Edna Krabappel, passed away in 2013, during the airing of the 25th season. I don't think it can be understated how much Marsha Wallace brought to making Edna such a fully realized and relatable character. Her performance so perfectly captured the different sides of her personality, both the caustic edge and her deep loneliness. She won an Emmy for her guest performance in season 3's Bart the Lover. On a personal note, I remember watching Marsha Wallace a lot on GSN reruns of Match Game or Password, and she was always so lovely, witty, and smart. Marsha Wallace was the best. The series retired Edna Krabappel after Wallace's death, paying tribute to her in a few season 25 episodes. The first aired episode after her death, Four Regrettings and a Funeral, they had this chalkboard gag. The following spring, in The Man Who Grew Too Much, they devoted the final act to Ned remembering dancing with his late wife, declaring that he's really going to miss her. And Nelson will miss her too. Aww. It did create a little weirdness in the continuity, as she did have a role in the episode YOLO, handing out some tests, and she was still seen in a bunch of other ensuing season 25 episodes. These things are gonna happen. They never really clarified how Edna Krabappel actually died. They made a joke in a future episode that Homer accidentally killed her as well. Generally, they would just show her tombstone, show her picture, or even have her ghost appear. In the season 29 episode, Left Behind, they played an archive recording that was used in season 23's Bark Gets a Z. She says, and I quote, If you can teach one kid one thing, then today will be a success. And I think that basically says it all when it comes to Edna Krabappel. I don't want to get too maudlin or sentimental with this ending. This is supposed to be a celebration of what a great character she was. The writers did an excellent job of portraying how difficult it must be to be a single woman teaching in a public school system. 
They wrote her as someone who is world weary and tired, someone who most certainly has her bad days, but also someone who is at least trying with her limited resources. I think every public school teacher in the country can relate to what she's going through. It's grueling work. And thankfully, the writers were able to give her a happy ending. Edna Krabappel is the kind of character that you really end up rooting for. You really sympathize with her situation. So I am glad she was able to find happiness in the end. Thanks for everything, Mrs. K. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Edna Krabappel moments are, as well as how you feel about her character arc. There was certainly a lot of continuity with this character. Please try to avoid starting a war over Team Skinner versus Team Flanders. Also, don't forget to nominate a new character for the next Simpsons Histories. This one got a little heavy with the research, so let's do a few obscure or quirky characters for a while. Not every character in Springfield is going to be as special as Edna Krabappel. As always, thanks for watching.